Hey everyone, welcome to this latest video from Bitcoin for Beginners. In this video, we're going to be talking about Hedera Hashgraph. There's been a huge amount of stories flying about about this project, so we thought we'd take a look and present you with what we found. So if this sounds like it's of interest to you, why not stick around and find out more? Okay, so welcome to this video about Hedera Hashcraft. As with all the videos from Kevin, Adrian, and myself, we try to approach these projects with as little bias as possible and just present you a free educational video. So if you want to see more content like this, you can subscribe to the channel below. And don't forget, if you enjoy this video, to give us a thumbs up and hit the bell icon to receive notifications of when we upload new content. So let's jump in and talk about what Hedera Hashgraph is. Well, the main selling points really for this are the advertised 10,000 transactions per second, low latency and minimal transaction fees. For those of you that want to know, Hedera Hashgraph is a directed acyclic graph or DAG, much like Nano and IOTA. It utilizes proof of stake over proof of work, does this uh, to save energy. One thing about Hedera's iteration of proof of stake is that they are not utilizing slashing as a form of on-chain punishment. Also worth noting is the concept of proxy staking, and this is where you can delegate your HBAR to a node and allow that node to stake your HBAR, and in return you will receive a percentage of the profits made from maintaining the network. It uses a gossip about gossip protocol. This is where users will share information on the previous transactions and that will go forward and is then confirmed. A little bit about Hedera Hashgraph itself is the fact that Hedera Hashgraph is a limited liability company. It's formed of council of 39 industry leading corporations. There's also Swirled, which is the company that owns the intellectual property on the Hashgraph algorithm. As previously mentioned, the council is made up of 39 industry leaders. The council establishes policy for council members. They're also responsible for setting the network rules, allocating the platform's treasury, and approving changes to the code base. The platform will be closed source, and this is in an attempt to prevent any network forks that could happen in the future. Whilst Hedera Hashgraph may be a limited liability company, they do have intentions for the network to be fully decentralized. However, at present, only council members are actually able to run any nodes for the foreseeable future until the council decide it is time to allow public users to come in and further decentralize the network. Hashgraph will be running four services, the first of which is the cryptocurrency, the second of which is the smart contract, which will be programmed using Solidity and push through the Ethereum virtual machine. There will also be the file service. This is where users can upload files to the blockchain and then access them via a transaction hash or via an address. Finally is the consensus service. The consensus service is where you can check the consensus of the network at any given point by utilizing the mirror node. Mirror nodes are nodes that run alongside the network but will not be able to add any information to the network. Then we can go on to the team and we have Dr. Lehman Baird and Mance Harmon. Dr. Lehman was previously a professor at the United States Air Force Academy. He's also the inventor of the Hashgraph algorithm. Mance has several years of experience in technology-based startups. He was also the course director at the United States Air Force Academy. Now, when looking at the devs, there were a few people that actually stood out and I was a little bit impressed by, which is really nice to see. The first of which is Nierika, I hope I've pronounced that right, but she has experience at Massworks as a developer and also at Bosch. The second was Greg, he's previously worked for Cisco and Comptel, and then there was also Tim McHale. Tim has experience at Cisco as well as Comptel, but also at Volvo and British Telecom. So these three seem to have quite a bit of experience at some rather large corporations, which is nice to see in the space. Now, if we take a look at the economics, above me, you will see the denominations of HBAR. You'll also see a grab from the recent trading that went live just a few days ago and the devastating crash that happened. Now, hopefully this is just a temporary bump for those of you that are invested. And with a potential parabolic phase 
on the horizon after the launch of back it may be worth picking up a small bag and just holding obviously that is not financial advice that is just my opinion and you should never invest more than you can afford to lose anyway if we look at the ico price we will see that the saft investors invested at nine cents whilst ico investors invested at 12 cents well at the peak this hit just over 13 cents and currently sits at around three now i do want to talk about the total supply of 50 billion tokens and break that down well at present the company holds 54.1 percent of that entire supply swirled the owner of the hashgraph algorithm owns a total of five percent of all coins employees will own 15.5 percent advisors are holding on to 2.9 percent market development fund sits at 2.6 percent and the community earn programs sit at around 2.4%. The remaining 17.4% is owned by investors. Okay, so this is the bit where I talk about the FUD that I mentioned earlier in the video. This is an extremely good article written by a developer and analyst that challenges some of the projections made in the white paper and on their marketing material. I'm not gonna go into any of this in too much detail, what I will mention is the fact that he challenges the 10,000 transactions per second and his reasoning behind that is that this number 10,000 is only for wallet to wallet transactions. Now once this was published the team were very quick to respond and they responded with their own counter FUD article and there's been a bit of a back and forwards on Twitter as well between the two of them. Like I said I'm not going to go into any detail about these articles. I do recommend that you go and check them out. The link is in the description and both of the articles are very well written and easy to understand so if you are interested in investing in Hedera then please do go and check that out. This bit is normally the bit where I tell you my opinion after doing my research. But I'm going to change it up and I would like you guys to tell me your opinion. If you're an ICO investor, if you're looking into the project, I want to know your thoughts. If you're not an investor and you have no interest in the project, well, that's absolutely fine. Leave us a comment in the description. Let us know if you enjoyed this video. And if you are a fan of free educational content, then you can click through to one of these videos here. Uh, but before you do that, make sure that you hit subscribe, give us a thumbs up and hit the bell icon to receive notifications if you haven't already. I've been Fez for Bitcoin for Beginners. Take care.